Today, it's exactly 5 years since my first ever upload on this YouTube channel. It was a video about dependency injection in C Sharp and I uploaded it on December 14th, 2018. Meanwhile, the channel has about 94 videos, including this one, and reached almost 15,000 subscribers. Maybe we will make this milestone before the end of the year. However, we almost hit 1 million views already, which we'll make in a few days, that's for sure. It's been an incredible journey and I learned so much along the way. Thanks for every support I got during this last 5 years. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. I asked on Twitter as well as in the YouTube community section about questions that I can answer for this Q&A video. To make it somewhat interesting for you to watch, I will also share some data about the analytics of the channel as well as how much money it makes with all those .NET development videos. And I will also talk about my journey within the last 5 years. The first question is fairly simple but interesting at the same time. What keeps you motivated? It's definitely not the money as you will find out later in this video. But I always loved teaching and talking about software development. I helped many developers starting their journey and write their first few lines of code or somehow supported them on their journey of becoming a software developer. Also, I'm fascinated by the opportunity the internet provides me. It allows me to record and share videos with people all over the world. And coming up with video ideas every week forces me to learn things and to explore new areas that I wouldn't have time to do if it wasn't for running this YouTube channel. It's a great way to stay on top of trends and to stay in the loop. Now that I'm almost hitting 15,000 subscribers, I'm also motivated to hit the 100,000 subscribers milestone to get one of those precious YouTube subscriber awards. The next question also came from Twitter. Do you have plans for big videos on desktop apps? What are your favorite non-Microsoft libraries? I definitely have plans to cover desktop development with .NET in the future. However, nothing specific is planned yet. And my favorite non-Microsoft UI frameworks for desktop development are Avalonia UI and Platform Uno. If you don't know about them, it's worth checking out what they do for the Microsoft ecosystem and what solutions they provide for your next.NET desktop development project. Another interesting question came from YouTube. How should one determine their level of expertise as a software engineer? For example, when should I say I'm at the level of a senior or what does it take to become a senior engineer specifically as a .NET developer? Also, how much time should it take to achieve those skills? First of all, everyone is different and everyone takes a different time to learn the same thing and work experience is different for everyone. Sometimes you do the same task all over again for 10 years and sometimes you'll constantly learn new things every week or every month. For me, a senior software developer is able to solve a somewhat complex problem by implementing a stable and maintainable software solution in a reasonable period. Everything else that comes on top of the previous definition relies on the company. For example, you need specific industry knowledge or knowledge about a specific technology. For me, the answer to your question is always depending on context. The next question is, what is pre-rendering in Blazor? In simple terms, pre-rendering in Blazor allows the server to send a response to the client which renders an HTML page while the server is still collecting data, for example, from an API or a database. As soon as the server gets the response from the API or the database, it sends an update to the client, which then updates the website in the browser. I don't want to go too technical about this topic in this video, but it's a great idea for a future video. 
So consider subscribing if you aren't already, so you won't miss this video. The next question is on Twitter by Maximilian Friedrich. What do you miss most from your regular job since going full-time into content creation? First of all, I recently quit my part-time software engineering role in February 2023 and started putting a lot more effort into the YouTube videos. Before that, I created the videos while still working as a software developer every day. This year, I finally wanted to make a leap and to see and find out if I can make content creation sustainable. Right now, it's not sustainable as you'll find out later in the video when I share more details about the financial situation of the channel and how much money it generates right now. Instead, I started a software company on my own and providing freelance and consulting work to different companies in my area. I also run a software as a service product for local football clubs with my brother. So the answer to the question is that I don't really miss it because I regularly do it still. What I miss from working for a bigger company is working with talented co-workers as well as working on big and interesting projects. The next question is by Robert Tomlin. What's the best way and best practice for handling back-end pagination? Honestly, I have no idea. I haven't implemented a more complex pagination solution than providing a start index and a number of elements and then according to those parameters returning data from the server. However, it sounds like an interesting topic for a future video. Before sharing my current revenue, I want to quickly share a few highlights of my 5-year journey on YouTube. The first video was definitely a highlight for me. I put in over 40 hours and I wasn't sure how people will receive the video. And by today's standards, the video was pretty bad to be honest. However, it's still the video with the most views on this channel until today. In March 2020, I reached my first 1000 subscribers on this channel. It was and still is a big number and a big milestone for me. Another important day was in July 2020 when I had enough watch time and enough subscribers to join the YouTube Partners program. Joining the YouTube Partners program allows you to get revenue from YouTube ads. And in my first month, I made 15 US dollars. Almost two years later, in March 2022, I had the first month where I reached over 30,000 views in a single month on this channel, which allowed me to earn $100 in a single month for the first time. In November 2022, I hit 10,000 subscribers. Amazing, it's such a big number and I never thought I will hit that goal any time within the last five years. However, when I started out and hit the first 100, I thought the same about the first 1000 and so on. And now I'm looking at 100,000 for the next big milestone, which seems even more unreachable. We'll see what the future holds. Recently, in November 2023, I had my best ever month reaching over 50,000 views in a single month for the first time, allowing me to earn $200 in a single month. In total, my channel earned about $3,500 US dollars within the last 5 years with almost 100 videos about .NET development. As you can see, the reason behind creating and uploading those videos goes far beyond making the big money. With that in mind, I'm very curious to see where we will be at in 2028, where this channel will reach its 10th anniversary. As always, if you want to learn more about .NET development, consider subscribing to the channel and if you learned something or at least were a tiny bit entertained, consider hitting the thumbs up button. It helps a lot. And I will see you in the next video.